today we are one, we are going to talk about uh, the classical genetics okay and uh, in the classical genetics part we'll be talking about the different part of mendelian inheritance as well as non mendelian inheritance okay and this is very very important because most of the problems or analytical questions that they will ask they will ask it from the non mendelian inheritance part okay so let's talk about the classical genetics first of all gregor mendel conducted a series of experiments and uh, the result of all those experiment give us different information especially one particular information he found out is that something is there in parents that are transferred from the parents to the daughter to the next generation so there is something that is responsible for all the properties that we can see in an organism and that something can be transferred from that organism to the next generation and mendel coined the term as factor so he called it the factor so there is a factor which gets transferred from the parent to the daughter parent generation to the daughter generation that actually regulates how that organism will behave okay so based on the series of experiments he performed he either performed the experiment with one particular trait one particular character sometimes he also performed experiments with more than one character so when he performed experiments with one particular character with the cross between organisms we call it mono hybrid cross because it involves one particular character mono hybrid so mono hybrid cross give us an important principle or a law you can say and then more than one when once he used two different characters we call it di hybrid cross in the di hybrid cross from the di hybrid cross he found out the second important law so we will be discussing about this two law okay the first law is the law of segregation and the second law is law of independent assortment okay the law of segregation the law of independent assortment so what happens in the law of segregation it says the two alleles segregate randomly during the formation of gametes because we know that in those organisms when we get two different set especially we are talking about humans here so two different set one from father one from mother origin so the chances are while they will be forming gamete because you know our normal body cells are diploid in nature but the gametes are haploid in nature so while forming gametes half of that chromosome is gone only half will be transferred in the gametes so during the formation of the gamete which half will be transferred can be either from the father origin or from the mother origin so it's a 50 50 chance that is the law of segregation while the law of independent assortment told us that the two two genes will assort independently and randomly from each other while he used two separate characters for example height of height of a plant and flower color so height can be tall or short flower color can be red or white now this two characters they are not linked they will not influence one another while transferred from one generation to the next that means if a tall plant is there the tall plant can have a red flower it can have a white flower a white flowered plant may be a tall one may be a short one okay these things are there <laughs> now mendel conducted the series of experiments and from the experimental result he found out a series of ratio okay and before understanding that experiments of mendel and talking about the ratio you need to know few things that is when we talk about a a, a particular character uh, there are two different versions of it because the character is uh, it's a phenotypic phenotypic expression but this phenotype that means what we can see from outside which is measurable quantifiable is as a result of 
genotypic makeup of that organism so phenotype is a representation of the genotype now as we talk about the different variations because you know one particular gene have multiple variations at least two versions those versions are known as alleles right and so for one gene two alleles among two alleles we have a dominant form of the allele and we have a recessive form of the allele the dominant form is represented as a capital and recessive form represented as in a small letters now combination of these two gives us three separate combinations capital a capital a capital a and small a small a and small a this is homozygous dominant this is heterozygous this is homozygous recessive now all these three different genotypes are possible from this one particular gene remember that but the phenotype may not be the same as the genotype for example this capital a capital a, let's say this will give us a tall height capital a small a also gives us a tall height and small a small a gives us a very short height now the reason behind it because the homozygous form of the recessive means short dominant means tall so whenever we have a heterozygous as due to one dominant allele it will also behave like the dominant one so the dominant trait will be visible in almost every single generation it will not skip any generation while recessive traits are those which can skip generation okay so now we will be talking about a series of different ratio what mendel have obtained with the series of experiments and the ratio is known as genotypic ratio and phenotypic ratio now for mono hybrid cross we will check the ratio and then we will also check the ratio for the di hybrid cross so for mono hybrid cross the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 for phenotypic ratio it will be 3 is to 1 okay so see the genotype ratio and phenotype ratio is not the same why because this genotype 1 means homozygous dominant two are heterozygous homozygous dominant and heterozygous both both are dominant in terms of phenotype that's why I put three here and then one is recessive homozygous recessive okay now for dihybrid cross the phenotypic ratio nine three three one 9331 9331 ratio for genotype it's a huge ratio you don't need to remember that but remember this phenotypic ratio for dihybrid cross and also remember the genotype and phenotype ratio of the monohybrid cross because whenever we'll be discussing about the non mendelian part of the inheritance we need to use this ratio okay you need to be very clear about the ratio first now let's talk about the set of this Mendel's ratio this Mendel's ratio whenever whenever we will talk about the different phenomena of the genetics in every phenomena where these ratios are maintained are known as Mendelian inheritance okay and in any place where these ratios are not maintained we call them non mendelian inheritance okay so our concern is morely this non mendelian genetics because two different types of compli complications are there which are away from the mendelian ratio one of them are genotype ratios follow mendel's law but phenotypes do not there will be few phenomena where you can see the genotypic ratio is maintained it's followed but the phenotype ratio is not followed and there are a totally different set of experiments and different scenarios where Mendel's 
neither of the mendel's law is applicable okay so the first zone is where mendel's law is applicable but only phenotypic only the genotypic ratio is maintained not the phenotype and the second situation mendel's law do not apply at all let's talk about the type 1 where the mendel's law is in effect but the genotype ratio is not followed and the list is like lethal genotype multiple alleles or allelic heterogeneity incomplete dominance epistasis penetrance expressivity pleiotropy phenocopies genetic heterogeneity or polygenic inheritance okay let's talk about individually first of all lethal genotype if a certain genotype causes death to an organism it is known as a lethal genotype generally we find the recessive lethal as a genotype in some situations means the homozygous recessive form causes the death of the organism due to some physio physiological or physical complications now let's say here if you look at the punnett square it should form capital h capital h capital h small h capital h small h small h small h now among this capital h capital h will survive capital h small h will also survive small h small h is due to recessive lethal gene it will not survive so normally the phenotypic ratio should be 3 let's say in this case we are looking at this capital h capital h capital h small h capital h small h all will be 3 is to 1 that should be the the phenotypic ratio right as as if uh, in a monohybrid cross but this one which is a recessive lethal is not survived so ultimately 100% people surviving are dominant no recessive phenotype is visible in this lethal gene okay now second type multiple allele how genotype ratio is maintained because genotype ratio does not relink to the 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 thing that you can visualize from outside technically that that organism is there the gene is also there but the organism fail to survive it's a phenotypic expression the death now second is multiple allele or allelic heterogeneity what happens in multiple allele is a situation where which is also linked with codominance we'll see that in a moment blood group in human now we have four different blood group a b a b and o but they are controlled by one particular gene but the different va allelic variation of the gene dictates different blood type now normally what we know if the dominant allele is present no matter what situation it is the phenotype will be dominant so both the alleles dominant the phenotypic ratio will be dominant if one is dominant other one is recessive still the phenotypic ratio will be dominant and if both are recessive then the phenotypic expression will be recessive okay but in this case we will see if we combine two different alleles a third new variety is generated what do i mean let's talk about this if ia and ia is present or ia small i homozygous dominant or heterozygous is present that will cause the blood type to be a if ib ib is present or ib i causing the blood type to be b so this till this point is fine now if ia and ib is present see two separate alleles a and b both are present now what we normally know that if both alleles are present the phenotype expression will be of a dominant allele for a, for the dominant allele but in this case they give a third phenotype that is blood type ab and the fourth situation where small i small i
small i small i neither a nor b is present causing the blood type to be o okay so a b a b and o four different blood types so see the combinations of alleles can give rise to different phenotypes now why this kind of difference is because let me tell you because the addition the the different blood type of human being depends on the type of uh, glucose moiety or uh, actually sugar moiety that is present on the surface so normally the precursor is h antigen and when alpha and acetyl galactosamine is linked with it which is a result of i a allele which converts h antigen into a antigen and uh, if galactose is present which is linked with i b allele which is a product of i b allele is added to the h antigen converted into the b antigen so a antigen and b antigen are prepared like this okay and if both are present ab if neither of them are present o co dominance two alleles are both expressed as a dominant phenotype okay this is also an example of co dominance this one as you can see so what happens in co dominance is a situation where both the genes both the alleles act as a dominant version so for example if we're looking at a cow which has two separate alleles capital r for red w for white coat color and so so the punnett square will give us r r r w r w and w w r r will be red ww will be white what about r and w as r and w both try to be a dominant expression here r w will not be either neither red nor white it will be white colored body of the cow with red spots in it like this okay so what happens here both the white color as well as the red color are present co dominant feature so usually the ratio the, the phenotype ratio should be 3 to 1 three red one white instead of that one red two red white and one white so the phenotype ratio is changed from 3 to 1 to 1 to 1 now the similar situation happens in incomplete dominance as well but here we are seeing kind of a blending effect that we have two flowers a red flower and a white flower and if we cross a red and white flower it will form a third color of the flower that is the pink flower okay so again capital r capital r for red capital r capital w capital w for white and if we combine them together it will form r w which is neither red nor white which is a blend of both of it pink known as incomplete dominance why incomplete because in this case neither the red is acting as a dominant nor the white is acting as a dominant they both fail to act as a dominant allele okay so let me tell you the ratio again r w make a punnett square with r w so r r r w r w w w okay so r r is red okay this is red this is white and r w are pink so again the ratio turn 1 to 2 to 1 the phenotype ratio is now 1 to 2 to 1 but in according to mendel it should be 3 to 1 you can easily distinguish between incomplete dominance and codominance in codominance both the alleles are behaving like dominant allele in incomplete dominance 
neither of them acting as a dominant allele it's a blend effect in incomplete dominance but in co-dominance you find both the features of the allele both the phenotype to be present now more important thing which is really difficult part which you need to understand so focus very closely to what I'll explain now okay it's epistasis epistasis is a situation where two genes interact with one another affecting the expression of one another okay and one gene and the gene product affect the expression of the phenotype of the other gene okay so Gregor Mendel told us that there is no gene interaction they work separately as sort independently but now we know that they are not working independently always one gene can influence the expression and the phenotype of the other gene that is the epistasis for example gene C controls the color of person's eye okay however gene A causes albinism that means lack of any pigment anywhere in the body okay so when when capital A gene is present in your body then it does not matter whether you have capital C or any other color you know if a person carrying capital A it will it does not matter whether they have capital C or not it will always be white due to the albinism because in this case capital A is dominant over capital C got it so let me tell you this because in this case one gene is dominant over other gene now the gene that regulates the other gene is known as the epistatic gene and the gene which is being regulated is known as the hypostatic gene okay so let us talk about the epistasis there are different situations of the epistasis we will discuss so let's first talk about the duplicate dominant epistasis we'll talk about different versions of the epistasis and the different versions of the epistasis will alter the ratio of phenotype phenotype ratio of the Mendel Mendel's phenotype ratio for a dihybrid cross was 9331 now we will be seeing that this Mendel's phenotypic ratio is altered in every single scenario of this epistatic event so first of all duplicate dominant epistasis try to understand the scenario it is where we are talking about the production of a product which means color so once the product is formed color will be added and we are talking about the kernel color of the wheat now production of the product from the precursor requires the synthesis of either enzyme A or enzyme B so if enzyme A is present or enzyme B is present it will convert the precursor into the product and kernel color will be added okay so either of these gene products will convert the precursor into the product got it now let me explain this 9331 ratio for you first when you have 9331 this ratio okay so when we talk about 9331 ratio what we mean by 9 3 3 and 1 9 means 9 of the individual out of 16 because adding them together will give you 16 9 individual they have either capital A let's let's talk about two separate genes capital A and capital B capital A and capital B because you know we are talking about dihybrid situation here two alleles I mean two genes A and B and two versions of these genes are present so they are dominant in each locus one is dominant in the loci the other one is recessive three of them were the alternative one that is A will be recessive and B at one part will be dominant and one will be recessive in both the locus got it nine out of sixteen where they have A and B dominant in one locus each locus three of them where a is dominant at its own locus b is recessive 
थ्री ऑफ देम वेर ए इज रिसेसिव बी इज डोमिनेंट एंड वन ऑफ देम बोथ ए एंड बी बोथ आर रिसेसिव ओके दिस इज द कॉमन रेशियो मेंडल अपटेन्ड ड्यू टू द डाइहाइब्रिड क्रॉस फिनोटिपिक रेशियो सो नाउ लेट्स लुक एट दिस रेशियो इन डुप्लीकेट डोमिनेंट सो नाउ टेल मी इफ कैपिटल एंड कैपिटल बी बोथ आर प्रेजेंट वॉट विल बी द सिचुएशन इफ कैपिटल ए एंड कैपिटल बी इज प्रेजेंट देन whether the color will be produced or not it will be produced because either enzyme a or enzyme b can convert it into the color so if a and b both are dominant that means colored will be produced so it's colored now this three where capital a is present but small b small b color will be produced or not yes color will be produced now this three where small a small a but one capital b is there color will be produced or not capital b is there so yes color will be produced and one where small a small a small b small b no color will be produced because neither capital a nor capital b is there so no color so the ratio of color is to no color is 3, 9 plus 3 plus 3 it's 15 is to 1 so this is the ratio of dominant epistasis okay duplicate dominant epistasis where we have a 15 is to 1 ratio okay so normally the ratio should be 9 3 3 1 but instead it's becoming 15 is to 1 in duplicate dominant and why we are calling it duplicate dominant epistasis because here the genes are acting as a duplicate versions because one can do the job of the other okay clear now let's move to the second one the idea of complementary genes in this case we are also talking about adding color to the flower the color name is anthocyanin okay anthocyanin is a compound which adds color to the flower where the precursor is converted to the intermediate due to the enzyme c and intermediate converted to anthocyanin using enzyme p okay so first of all in this case the scenario is little different than the earlier one in earlier case either a or b can convert the precursor into color in this case you need both enzyme c as well as enzyme p to convert the precursor into anthocyanin right so for adding color we need both capital c as well as capital p right so now let's look at the ratio 9 where capital c and capital p both are present so we need to add color yes it will add color now 3 where capital c is there but no capital p what will happen here no capital p but capital c is there so no color because we need both c and p to add color same situation next capital p is there but no capital c no color and last small c small c small p small p means again no capital c neither capital p no color so what will be the ratio of color is to no color compound 9 is to 3 plus 3 plus 1 7 9 is to 7 so in flower color in sweet pea where it involves the production of anthocyanin is known as a complementary gene effect and this complementary gene production is caused utilizing the precursor right involving uh, this idea because why we are calling this genes as complementary gene because in this case gene c and gene p are complementing the effect of one another for a particular phenotype to occur now third one dominant epistasis what happens in dominant epistasis in this case we are talking about the shapes of squash fruit 
or sometimes also color of the squash fruit okay whether it will be white yellow or green there are multiple colors possible now remember one thing in this scenario no color is a dominant version than the color okay so there are two different colors possible capital G means yellow color small g is a recessive version of that same gene means green color okay but if capital W gene is present capital W is epistatic gene over capital G so if capital W is present no color will form because capital W means white got it so capital W is the epistatic gene capital G is a hypostatic gene in this case and capital W is dominant over even the dominant form of this G got it so 9 where capital W capital G both are present what will be the color of the food what will be the color white why because capital W is present does not matter whether capital G is there or small g is there it will always turn it into white 3 where capital W there but no capital G again white because if capital W is there it will be white so only the color will be added if capital W is not present in dominant form so whenever the situation is small w small w then only the color will be added now let's look at here 3 where small w small w and capital G is there so as capital W is absent this means it will add color what color capital G stands for what yellow so it will be of yellow color now the one where no capital W is there so again it will add color small g is there so it will add green so the ratio between white yellow and green will be 9 plus 3 12 is to 3 yellow 1 green the ratio for the dominant epistasis will be 12 is to 3 is to 1 now the fourth kind or suppression type which will be very much familiar very much similar with that of this dominant epistasis only a minor difference in suppression also you will see one particular gene will suppress the effect of the expression of other gene okay so in this case we are talking about formation of blue pigment from yellow pigment and we need an enzyme enzyme K enzyme K converts yellow pigment into blue pigment and enzyme K is only active if gene capital D is genotyped with small d small d so gene capital D if present in a recessive homozygous recessive form that is small d small d then only they will form the enzyme K will act otherwise enzyme K will not act so we are talking about the production of a pigment known as malvidin malvidin production in primula plant ok so 9 where capital K capital D are present what will happen as capital D is there even though capital K is present but no malvidin 3 where capital K is there but no capital D yes there will be malvidin produced because no capital D is there nobody to repress and capital K will add the color now capital D is there but small k so again no malvidin and there is no capital D but no capital K so as there is no capital K they will fail to produce the enzyme although there is no suppression but still they, as there is no capital K they will fail to produce the enzyme so again no malvidin so ultimately what will be the ratio of malvidin no malvidin versus malvidin no malvidin is 9 plus 3 plus 1 13 malvidin 3 so the ratio becomes 13 is to 3 
Okay. This will be the ratio. It is known as suppression because in this case capital D suppresses the expression of capital K. Now we will talk about two more terms, penetrance and expressivity. Sometimes the same genotype will not produce the phenotype in all individuals. Because you know, when we say this person is heterozygous or homozygous dominant, we mean some phenotype attached to them, right? Whenever we say it's heterozygous, we, we mean some sort of phenotype attached to them. But let's say there are 100 individuals. And among those 100 individuals, among those 100 individuals, all of them has this heterozygous genotype. So they're supposed to express the phenotype of this genotype. But only 80 out of 100 is expressing that phenotype. 20, although they have the genotype, but is not expressing the, the phenotype. We call it penetrance. So if 100 out of 100 expresses the phenotype, it will be called as a 100% penetrance. And if 80 out of 100 is expressing the phenotype, then it will be termed as the 80% penetrance. Okay. So the penetrance can be high, the penetrance can be low. But it is a fact, whenever we are looking at a huge population, then we will not see 100% penetrance. So from outside, whatever you can see is not entirely what happens in the genotype scale. Got it? So how we calculate penetrance? The number of individuals who have genotype and express the phenotype the tot divided by the total number of individuals who have the genotype. Got it? Another term is expressivity. Expressivity is when Expressivity is simply known as the degree of penetrance. Degree of a phenotype in individual. Now let's say uh, capital H, capital T, capital T is tall, capital T, small t is also tall. But how much tall? Although let's say 100 plants, they have capital T, small t, all of them same genotype, capital T, small t. But still few plants will be 10 meters tall, few plants will be 5 meters tall, few plants will be 3 meters tall. So although they have the same genotype, due to different reasons, different facts, the phenotype that they share will not be exactly the same. In fact, the phenotype are different. So the degree of the penetrance are different. So in this picture you can easily see the idea of express, uh, expressivity, like expressivity and penetrance. See the genotype capital B small b. Capital B is blue, small b is white. So when capital B small b is there, it also means blue. Right? So here in this picture, there are total nine individuals. Five out of nine, all remember all of them has the same genotype. I am explaining the penetrance. Be patient a little bit. Look at this slide. All of them share the same genotype, capital B, small b. All of it. But still few of them are blue, few of them are white. Five out of nine are blue, rest four are white. This is caused due to variable penetrance. Variable penetrance means not, this disease is not 100% penetrance. Only five out of nine individuals have the effect. Got it? I hope it's clear then. Now variable expressivity. Now let's say in this case again nine individuals all of them show their all of them showed their penetrance. All of them received that blue color so they have 100% penetrance. But not all of them share the same intensity of the blue color. 
few of them dark let's say this is the darkest this is also dark these are little lighter these are very faint so the idea of expressivity is you know the phenotypic effect it's not same although the genotype is the same so the impact or the degree of the phenotype expressed are different among them so this is variable expressivity and in this third scenario where only six out of nine showed the color six out of nine showed the color and even among those six two with very intensity three with milder intensity and one with the least intensity so this is variable penetrance as well as variable expressivity now another term pleiotropy it's kind of very easy term it where one gene causes more than one phenotype okay and actually it's not causing because uh, that one gene product is linked in multiple pathways of the body so that whenever that gene is altered and the expression of that gene is represented uh, by the different part of the body tissue for example generally uh, one gene that makes the connective tissue that gene is responsible for the structure of the connective tissue that gene will regulate uh, the lens formation of the eye it will regulate the formation of the heart muscle formation of the limbs skin and the skeletal muscles as well so now if that gene has some sort of defect not only there will be a problem with the eye lens or, or visualizing things but there will be a problem with the heartbeat there will be a problem with the skeletal muscle function okay that is known as a pleiotropy where one genes one gene is involved in multiple trait in our body phenocopies what is this term phenocopy phenocopy is situation where although a trait looks like genetic or inherited but it's not at all genetic it is due to the impact of environmental factors okay for example himalayan rabbit is a very fine example for that uh, we've been talking about this uh, e example of uh, phenocopies and that is himalayan rabbit what i was saying is that himalayan rabbits uh, if, if you look at the idea of himalayan rabbit is that there are few portions of their body like the legs the ear and some part of their mouth tends to be highly pigmented and dark in color while the rest of the body color is white okay so this coat color in himalayan rabbit and is siamese cat these are known as a siamese cat uh, they are generally due to the change in environmental temperature for example there are alleles that 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 are affected by the temperature greater than 33 degrees celsius that destroys the tyrosinase enzyme and that reduces the melanin pigment production in the portions of the body that is exposed to the sunlight more so most of their body part here which are exposed to the sunlight more where uh, they they reduces the production of melanin pigment thus resulting in a whiter color or, or less pigmented part of the body and rest of the part uh, which is away from this sun which is kind of connected and near about near near the snow because in the legs mouth because they walk uh, like that fashion putting their mouth very close to the snow those regions uh, as they are very close to the snow they receives uh, less sunlight compared to the rest of the body so where uh, the pigmentation is possible now the term is genetic heterogeneity or polygenic inheritance there are two different terms you know allelic heterogeneity and genetic heterogeneity allelic heterogeneity we we have seen earlier the human blood type where there is one gene but different versions of the allele uh, different version of the gene that means alleles are there and the combination of different alleles result in different phenotype that was the idea of multiple alleles but 
polygenic inheritance is a situation where more than one gene is involved for a phenotypic character more than one gene is involved generally most of the human complex characteristics are they, they work by the same fashion you know because they involve in this uh, multiple genes together for example human skin color human eye color okay human height intelligence and many more traits are polygenic because our traits are not controlled by one particular gene it's not possible so this complex character characteristics are always is a result of multiple genes interacting with one another so one such example if you look at the skin color of human let's say there are three genes regulating the skin color gene a b and c so here we can see that capital a capital a capital b capital b capital c capital c this is one full dominant version full dominant uh, version of this gene and full recessive version small a small a small b small b small c small c so let's say in this case the capital means black and small recessive means white so this capital a capital a capital b capital b capital c capital c means the darkest skin tone and all small version means lightest or fairest skin skin tone so in the population and if you look at the punnett square as we are involving three characters the punnett square will be of 64 individuals 64 gametes and in those 64 zygotes that we can see one out of 64 will be this darkest skin tone one out of 64 will be the lightest skin tone and then there will be different combinations but what we will find as maximum that is 20 out of 64 is with the genetic trait of capital A small a capital B small b capital C small c heterozygous for all these three different genes this is the most dominant form I mean most common form that will be found in the population so if you start putting this value in a graph what we will find is that the lightest skin tone lowest the darkest skin tone on the other hand of the graph lowest and there will be a bell shaped curve where the maximum number of individuals in the population here carrying capital A small a capital B small c capital capital B small b capital C small c okay so again for a summary I put all this law and their effects like from lethal gene till genetic heterogeneity you can easily check the summary of that now let's talk about the type 2 remember we we've, we've been talking about the two different types of non mendelian inheritance this is the type 2 non mendelian inheritance that is where the mendel's law no longer apply it will not follow any genetic ratio it will not follow any phenotype ratio none of the ratios will be followed so let's talk about it first of all mitochondrial inheritance or cytoplasmic inheritance and then linkage these are the two types that we will talk so what is mitochondrial inheritance or in a better word in a very general word we can say the cytoplasmic inheritance till this point we've been talking about the inheritance pattern of the factor and the factor is nothing but the uh, chromosomes that we now know that the chromosomes that are prepared the chromosome can be transferred from the parent generation to the offspring generation so mitochondrial inheritance means where we are talking about genes which are present inside the organelles like mitochondria inside the organelles like chloroplast so mitochondria chloroplast these organelles have their own dna element they have their own genetic element so as they have their own genetic element 
if any gene is carried by them and when it's transferred from one generation to the other the, the genetic transfer pattern is different because these organelles are present in the cytoplasm and while forming the zygote mother denote mother provides all the cytoplasmic content father provides only the nucleus mother provides all the cytoplasmic content so a newborn organism receives all the cytoplasm from its mother so if that cytoplasm carrying mitochondria and the mitochondrial carrying any defective gene then that defective gene will be transferred from mother to all their next progeny so from mother to all the son and daughter that is the mitochondrial inheritance so again the simple idea if mother is affected all the children will be affected if father is affected with the cyto mitochondrial inheritance none of the individuals will be affected so in this case you can see that female parent and male parent and in this in this example where there is a cross between female and male female with a defect in the chloroplast gene that leads to lack of green pigment formation so this cross all the offspring that are produced here will be white because the mother had the defect but the same situation if the father had the defect then none of the individuals will have this albini albino color so they will have green white uh, and varied offsprings because the father had the defect okay now linkage the idea of mendel totally it's not followed by the linkage what is linkage gregor mendel discussed one thing gregor mendel and his ratios always are possible because gregor mendel found all his genes what he worked with to be present in the different chromosome they are not present in the same chromosome now the problem is why the segregation is working what mendel told us that those genes are not linked those genes will not influence one another but what happens during the formation of the gamete during the formation of the gamete in meiosis some part of that gene some part of those of those fragment of the gene can get swapped with the process called as a crossing over okay so this crossing over causes the swapping of the chromosomal segments the swapping of the chromosomal segments so as they swap the chromosomal segment the chances are that from the parental generation new varieties may generate that's a probability right so new varieties are known as recombinant varieties and the one that they used to produce the new variety are known as the wild type variety or parental variety so they have this parental variety and the chances there that they will produce a recombinant variety 